Let's continue our introduction to Solaris and Karma by taking a look at how we can create geometry and start to organize the scene that we are building. So as always, the project file for this will be available on Patreon, so you can grab it there if you're interested, but let's go ahead and drop down a SOP create. And let's start to just build something out here. So if we jump inside here, we can drop down a grid. So as I said before, we have access to all of our SOPs in the SOP create. So everything in the, in the SOP level is available inside of there. And then let's also drop down a sphere. And then let's merge these together. So I'll set the display flag on the merge. It is important to note that whatever your display flag is set on is going to be what's brought into the state, the upper level of the stage context. So if I have this set to the grid, I come to the top here, we only have our grid there. If I have this set to the sphere, we only have our sphere there. But if I set this to the merge, then we get both. So if we look at our geometry spreadsheet here, our scene graph, you can see that we have two meshes. We have our sphere and we have our grid, but everything's being brought in as one mesh, which we may or may not want. And we can control kind of how the meshes are brought in inside of our SOP create here. So the way that we do this, actually, if we take a look at our actual node, our SOP create here, we come over to this import from SOPs, we come down to this primitive definition, we have these path attributes. So this is gonna determine what attributes by default are going to be brought in as different meshes. So we have path and we have name. Luckily, name is one that's super easy to work with. So we're just gonna use that. You don't have to check anything here. It's gonna automatically recognize the name attribute. So there's actually a node for this. So if we drop down a name, you see we have a name attribute that's being created on the primitives. And that's also important to note, it is on the primitives. So it needs to be on the primitives. The name attribute has to be on the primitives because this is looking for a primitive definition. So if we have this name attribute, we can name this whatever we want. So let's go ahead and name this grid. And then if I take a look here, we have our grid, our name attribute, is on our grid. Our sphere doesn't have anything on it. So let's go ahead. We can drop down an attribute create. This is another way to create the name attribute. So we'll call this a name. We'll again make sure that this is on primitive. And then we need to set this to a string. And we'll call this sphere. Sphere. And one other way. Let's go ahead and drop down a tube here. Just turn that on. If we do a primitive wrangle. We can wire this into our merge as well. And if we set S at name is equal to, we'll call this tube. Now we have a tube, a sphere. Let's move this one out of the way. So we have a tube, a sphere, and a grid. And all of them have their different name which you can see here inside the geometry spreadsheet. And once we jump up to the top level of the stage context, you see that we have a SOP create here that has a three a set of three different meshes here. So our grid, our sphere, and our tube. And that's how we go about building out our scenes. We can just add a name attribute to allow us to kind of organize things a little bit. Now, one other thing that it is important to know, we don't necessarily have to put these under the SOP create if we don't want. We can dive back inside here and in this name here, if we set a backslash, we can call this geo and then backslash grid. Now, if we go back up, we have another X form that's created here and we have our grid underneath that. And we can take this a step further and we can call this sub geo and even, I don't know, even further sub geo, you know, whatever we want. And then when we jump back up to the stage context here, we have our X form with our geo and then our sub geo and then our even further sub geo where our mesh is being stored underneath that. So you can build out your scenes that way. And if we go ahead and just set this back to something, you know, normal, just geometry and then we'll call it grid. 
Let's go ahead and make a duplicate of this real quick. And let's delete out the other stuff. And then we can come back into the stop create here. Let's get rid of these two. And well, actually we'll keep that. We'll just merge them. So if I set these both equal to a geo slash sphere, and then you do geo slash tube. If I take a look at that, we now have, if I merge these, and I look at our, our merge, you see we no longer have our stop create and our stop create two. We have just this geometry X form where we have our mesh being stored under. So we can further downstream, we can you know build a bunch of things. And then if we want all of our geometry to be stored, or let's say we're building out um, like a city or something, we can add all of our city geometry under an X form called like city. And then we have our landscape maybe under a, a landscape X form. We can just kind of organize our scenes out that way just to keep things a little bit more clean and, and uniform in our scene. Now, one other thing that we need to cover is groups because we need to be able to access groups inside of Solaris. When it comes to rendering, we may need to assign different materials to different parts of different objects. And the way that we do that is just by creating groups inside of our SOP create here. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's set this grid. We've already got 10 by 10 rows. So this should be set to smooth wire shaded. So let's go ahead and select some of these polygons here. So we have some polygons selected and we have this group that we have set here. And again, we're on primitives for that group. So if we come back up to the stage level context, we can come down to this import from SOPS and then our import data. And if we scroll down, we can come to the subset groups and we have our different groups that are available to us here. So we can import those groups into the top level of our stage context so that we can actually see those and use those for things like material assignments. So, or I don't know, can we even do a color? No, we can't do a color on here. So let's just drop down a material library just to show you. We'll go over this kind of more in detail later on. But if we dive inside here and just drop a Karma material builder onto here. We can autofill this and then assign to geometry. We have this group that is available underneath that grid. So we could assign it just to that group if we wanted. And then that material, I don't know if it'll show up in the viewport or not. If we change this, yeah, you already see it showing up there. So if we change this color to like red, you can see that we have that, that material assigned only to where we have that selection of that group. And you can you know, create as many groups as you want, just like normal inside Houdini. You'll just have to come in here and make sure that we have all of the groups added to, that we want to use added to this subset groups. That way we have access to them on the stage level. So that is a, quick look at how we can start to organize our scenes and how we can start to bring in some things. This is also where you bring in attributes. So you have some different settings here, um, all sorts of different settings inside here, but we can bring in attributes as well through this. If you need to have access to certain attributes, it's by default, uh, not necessarily going to bring all those in and you can set them to, to different things, but that is a, a quick look at how we can start to build out our scenes inside of Solaris and start to work with some of the tools that are uh, available to us. So make sure that you have a good grasp on this because we're gonna be using this going forward in starting to build out the actual scene. So make sure that you understand it fully. Mess around with it, start creating some things and we'll start to build out our scene in the next video. But anyways, that wraps up this video. The project files will be available on Patreon. If you'd like to grab them on there, I will comment out some things in here and add some notes for you so you don't have to reference the video if you don't want to. 
Uh, same with the prior videos and the future videos. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. We will cover more stuff with Solaris as we move on and start to build out this scene uh, that we start that we saw in the, the beginning of the video. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day. Thank you.